This is WWOZ, and uh, we are here with the students from the Lewis Satchmore Armstrong Summer Jazz Camp Octet. And they are joined by Steve Ture and Kent Jordan. What was the first song? Tell us about the first song that you played for us, please. That was a Wayne Shorter Footprints. Okay. Well, how about we go on to the second piece and we'll come back and talk a little bit.
You're listening to WWOZ FM New Orleans. This is Jazz from the French Market. And we have as our special guest this evening the Louis Satchmo Armstrong Jazz Camp Octet. They're here live in the studio. You've been watching them uh, either through our website at WWOZ.org or on Facebook because we are doing a live video stream. So we want to say thank you, and uh, we have one of the instructors with us, Mr. Kent Jordan, and welcome to WWOZ. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. It's a great pleasure having all of you in. And what beautiful music with, um, you know, skill. Well, yeah, they you know... The, the the younger they are, it seems like the you know the the more knowledgeable they are these days. So these, you know, these young musicians are are, are really you know carrying on a tradition of jazz music uh, in, in here in New Orleans. And that follows right up with um, uh, Jackie Harris uh, wanting you know the tradition of jazz uh, to be perpetuated and the instruction to be perpetuated right here in New Orleans, the right. birthplace of jazz. Uh, of course. And we and we can claim it for ourselves, but, you know, and, and, and Louis Armstrong himself, you know, was a, uh, an ambassador for this music, and that's the thing. I think these, uh, these young musicians um, and students are really carrying out that tradition of, of performing the music and, and playing it with great skill and, and and really, um, you know, improvisation, which is, I tell my kids all the time, the root word of improvisation is improve. So they definitely are improving the music. That's great. <laughs> Kent Jordan is speaking with us right now on WWOZ. Um, Louis Armstrong Camp has been in existence for 24, 25 years? 25 years. 25 This is years. our 25th anniversary. And um, how long have you been teaching at the camp? Really since the inception of the camp. Since the inception, um, you know, my, my father is the artistic director, and I come from a family of musicians. Uh, and the late, great Alvin Baptiste was an instructor here. He was my uncle. And I have, you know, family that teaches here. My brother Marlon, of course, you know, and my sister Rachel uh, teaches the violin, uh, or the string classes, I should say. And uh, it's really, um, you know, carrying on that tradition of family, music, um, New Orleans, great music, you know. And we have kids not only from New Orleans, but we have people from all over the world uh, coming here to perform. James on piano is from New Jersey, and Dalisu is from South Africa. So, you know, we're, we're, we really have an, an international flavor about what we're doing. And I imagine that um, being an instructor mm -hmm. um, is something that has to come from a place of deep passion, you know, for the culture and the music, and sure. also seeing the youth uh, benefit from the instructions. And I learn from them. You know, that's the <laughs> thing. No, seriously. I mean, you know, there's a, there's a sense of reciprocity that has to happen with music. It's just not a one-way street. You know, you'd be surprised what kids are listening to, uh, the information that they have, the things that they can import to you. So it's not just a, a thing of, of being, you know, how can I say this, um, um, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, having a monopolistic aspect of information that I know everything. I mean, I learn from these, from everybody. I mean, seriously, I mean, I'm, I'm really into that. Like, what do you, what can you share? You know, what, what do you know that uh, I don't know? Because nobody knows everything. That's the first thing. Nobody knows everything. So well, you that's have to be great. open. Yeah. So I learn a lot. I really do. So the sharing of the music is a very democratic process? It can be, but yeah. it can be maniacal as well. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 we err on the side of democracy. Okay. Right, when it comes to certain things. But then, you know, as my father, if he were here, and the great Steve Terray, we were just talking, you know, fundamentals are so important to this music. Sometimes, you know, you can sort of get ahead of yourself and think, well, I know this tune, I play with these musicians. But... You know, Steve and I were talking just in the hall about, he was telling me about long tones, and we were talking about air and woodwind instruments and how important that is. So you never can get away from those fundamentals. You know, it's like what Miles Davis told me a long time ago. He said, if you don't have a sound, why show up? <laughs> so sound is very important. <laughs> exactly. Right. Well, uh, we're looking forward also, Kent Jordan, to speaking with Caleb and James. Okay. In the program, and we want to know specifically from Caleb Great and James hear. about uh, uh, what they've gotten from the jazz camp this summer. Yep, yeah, yeah. 
from going to the jazz camp, I learned that you can never skip over fundamentals. Like before, uh, I wasn't like I didn't like fundamentals because I felt it was boring. But when I came here and I started working on them, I realized how much it improved my playing. Well, you sound really good. And uh, one thing that I admire with all of you is the way you listen. Uh, you know, everybody's really listening. I'm James. I'm I'm from New Jersey. This is actually my first time in New Orleans. But you, what you said about listening, um, listening is the most important part of this music, being able to um, hear what others have to say and being able to respond to that and not necessarily what you want to do, not imposing your will on the music, but letting the music come to you and responding to what's happening with other, uh, the other people. That's one of the most important things, I think, in this music, especially because... You mentioned the word democratic before. It's it's everyone has something to say. Exactly. And everybody's voice is equal. And so we have to respect everybody's voice and be able to um, respond to that. Thank you, James. And don't go away quite yet because uh, we want to know what uh, how you feel about the camp and uh, what are some of the very special things that you've gotten out of these three weeks that you couldn't have gotten anywhere else? Well, uh, it being my first time in New Orleans, of course, there's a, a different culture around the music, a different lifestyle in the city. Um, and I think that has really infused into my bones, I would say. Uh, it's <laughs> That does happen. And yeah, yes. and I, I walk a different way now, maybe. <laughs> um, and I think I, your mindset consciously and unconsciously changes when you're around this city. It's just a, such a special place, I think. Um, I live ne near New York, and New York, same way. I feel like New York, you have a certain, there's a certain uh, air, there's a certain vibe there that you get and you absorb. Same thing with New Orleans. I mean, we could talk about specifics, like, you know, the second line and the R&B, uh, big proponents of New Orleans music. But even just the way people talk, the way people walk, the heat. Ah, uh, uh, yes. The lifestyle, it, I think it all affects your creative process. It all affects your, your thinking. And I think that's the main thing that I'll be bringing back to my folks in New Jersey. James, thank you so much. Um, so we would love uh, for Leslie Cooper to come up to the mic now and talk to us a little bit more. Thank you. Thank you very much. First of all, Marius, thank you so much for having us on your show today. All of the show hosts here at WWOZ, um, they, this used to be a one-day a one day program, just one day a week, and now everybody wants, wants a piece of it. So thank you so much for having us on your show. I can't think of a better partnership than your Jazz from the French Market and the Satchmo Camp, because you always bring us information about that. Um, I want to thank these kids for their dedication and their devotion to the music and uh, returning to camp. Uh, this year we've got a fairly young, a new crop. I don't think anybody's been more than three years, two years. Anybody been three? Nope. We have a, a, a artist in residence here with us today, Steve Touré, who is going to um, who's going to play this last song with them. Is that right? And then after that, uh, of course, we want to thank you know WWOZ. I want to thank the Gia Maoni Prima Foundation that helps make this possible. But most importantly, that these kids will be excited about. I'm an old woman. I can call you a kid. Don't look at me like that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a kid. Yes, you are. I'm an old woman. You'll be most excited about thanking Reginelli's because we've got pizza coming for you guys um, after we get through. So uh, musicians, young musicians are always up for that. So um, I would love to hear another tune. And then Kent, can I ask you and Steve and Miss Jackie Harris to meet us in the studio afterwards? Because I know you've got a lot of exciting week. You've got some fundraisers. You've got performances. And I know that uh, you can talk afterwards with Marisa about all of that that's going on. But we have a third song. Is that right? What do we have? Straight No Chaser. Thank you again, Marisa. Bye. 
Thank you.